In this video, we're going to recognize and use variation to solve a variety of problems. There are three types of variation that we're going to look at. The first is direct variation, and what that means is that as x increases, y is also going to increase. So they're both going to go in the same direction. As an equation, that's going to look like y equals some constant times x. Next, there's inverse variation. This is when x and y are going to work in different directions, so as x gets bigger, y is going to get smaller. As an equation, that would look like y equals some constant divided by x. So as the denominator of a fraction gets bigger and bigger and bigger, the whole fraction gets smaller and smaller. The third one is called joint variation, and that's when y changes in relation to two other variables. So not just a, a relationship between x and y, but it looks like direct variation where you have some constant and then it's times two variables, maybe w and x. This one doesn't get used quite as often, but we might run into a situation where we're dealing with a variation that uses direct variation and inverse variation with a couple different variables. So let's look at a pattern of numbers and try to tell if it's direct, inverse, or neither. In example A, we pay attention to what happens to y as the x's get bigger. So as the x's grow from 2 to 15, what are happening to the y values? Starts at 15 and then goes to 7, to 3, and to 2. Those values are getting smaller and smaller. So I would think that this is inverse variation. Now we can also look at the graph and, and see what that tells us. If we start just sketching the graph of where these points are, uh, first it says when x is 2, y is up here at 15. Uh, and then at 4, y is at 7.5, so halfway there. At 10, we're at 3. And at 15, we're down at 2. And we can see that as the x's get bigger and bigger, what's happening to the graph is it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And that's why it's inverse variation. In the second example, as the x's get bigger and bigger, take a look at the y values, 8, 20, 40, 60. Those values are getting bigger and bigger. And that would point to this relationship being an instance of direct variation. So let's see what happens to that graph. If we start plotting points, at 2 we're starting at 8, at 4 we're up to 20, at 10 we're at 40, and at 15, we're all the way up to 60. And we see the trend of all this data is growing, getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So when the data is growing, it's direct variation. And when it's shrinking, it would be inverse variation. Now let's take a look at the last one in C. When we pay attention to what happens to the y values, we start at 40, down to 12, up to 30, down to 6. And because it's going up and down, it's, we're not really going to be able to tell if it's direct or inverse. Looking at the graph, um, we can visually see it because 2 is up here at 40, 4 is down to 12, at 10, back up to 30, and at 15, down to 6. And we see that this thing is going up and going down, and that's why it's neither direct nor inverse. Let's say that we know x and y very inversely, and that when x is equal to 4, y is equal to 12. That's enough to first come up with the function for this inverse variation. Now, how we do that is we start with our kind of general inverse variation formula, which uh, from the first slide was y equals k over x. And since I know that when x is equal to 4, y is equal to 12, I'm going to take those two values and plug them into this general form. So I'll plug in 12 for y and 4 for x. Solving this, k is equal to 48, just by multiplying by 4 on both sides. Now this isn't any sort of function. That just tells us what the constant is. The function is going to be y equals 48 over x. So what does that variation look like? Well, let me draw some axes here, the x and the y axis. And uh, why don't we just plot a, a few points? If x is 0, we can't plug anything in there because you can't divide by 0. But if x is 1, then the y value is going to be 48. If x is 2, then 
48 divided by 2 is 24. If we go up to 4, 48 divided by 4, that's going to be 12. If we go up to 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, then 48 divided by 8 is going to be 6. And we see that the values are going to keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller. But they're going to also not ever really get to 0 and not get negative as well. But this is what the inverse variation is going to look like. All right, the senior class picks up litter at the park every week. Each week, there's about the same amount of trash. And the table shows the amount of time spent picking up the litter as a variation in the number of students helping. Now, how many students are needed to pick up trash in 30 minutes? Before we can actually answer that question, we're going to need to identify whether this is direct or inverse variation. So we pay attention as the n's increase going 3, 5, 12, 17. What happens to the amount of time? Well, from 85 minutes all the way down to 15 minutes, we see that as n is increasing, t is decreasing. That makes this inverse variation. So we're going to grab the inverse variation formula and apply it to this n and t. Since n and t vary inversely, then n is going to equal some constant divided by t. In order to come up with our function, we can just take any one of the values. I'll take this first one. And uh, my n, in this case, is going to be 3. And my k, I don't know, but t is 85. So we just multiply both sides by 85, and we get the k is equal to 255. That means that our function is really n equals 255 divided by t. Now, in order to determine how many students we need to pick up trash in 30 minutes, I'm just going to plug in 30 for t. And 255 divided by 30 is 8.5. So we would need 8.5 people. Well, that doesn't really make sense. You know, we should probably round it up to 9 people. This type of problem can get fairly complicated looking quickly. For example, the number of bags of grass seed needed to seed a yard varies directly with the yard's area and inversely with the weight of each bag. If it takes two three-pound bags to seed a yard that's 3,600 square feet, how many bags are needed to seed a 9,000 square foot yard? Well, going back to the beginning, we see that this is a type of joint variation because all of our variables are going to be related in a couple different ways. First of all, they're going to vary directly and inversely. So this is the type of joint variation that I'm talking about. So let's grab all of the variables and start putting them together. We need the number of bags, n, the yard's area, a, and the weight of each bag. So first of all, it says that the number of bags of grass seed, n, is going to vary directly with the area. So that means direct variation is where we take a constant times a. Then it's also going to vary inversely with the weight of each bag, w. That means that our constant k has to get divided by w. This is a crucial first step, just getting all of our variables in the right spot. After that, we can start to try and figure it out. First of all, the question begins by saying if it takes two three pound bags to CDR that's 3,600 square feet. That gives us a, a lot of numbers that we can start plugging into our equation. Now remember n was the number of bags of grass seed and looking at this sentence if it takes two three pound bags that means that there's going to be two bags. The area of the yard was the 3,600 square feet And W, remember that, was the weight of each bag. And it said that it took two three-pound bags. So the weight is three pounds. With all these values in the equation, it looks like we have to solve for K. So I'm going to multiply both sides by three. And then divide by the 3,600. So the constant is going to be 1 over 600. That means we can rewrite our function 
as n is equal to 1 over 600 times the area divided by the weight of each bag. Now, we can go back to the question and actually figure something out. How many bags are needed to seed a 9,000 square foot yard? Well, since we got 9,000 square feet, that's our area. The weight of the bag hasn't changed at all. It's still going to be three pound bags. So the only thing that's left is to figure out how many bags they are in. And, and so now it's just a matter of calculating 1 over 600 times 9,000. And divided by 3 is the same as multiplying by 1 third. So we can do a little canceling here. Take 100 out of there. 3 out of there, that would leave us with 30. And 30 divided by 6 is going to equal 5. 5 bags of seed is what's going to be needed. So basically when it comes to these types of problems, there's three very general steps that will help you through it. First, identify what form you should be using. If you're talking about direct variation, use the constant times x. If you're using inverse variation, then do the constant divided by x. The next part is going to take all the, all the preliminary values that they give you, plug it into the equation, and find out what that constant is. Once you have the constant, you'll have your actual function. With your function, you can finish the problem by um, taking the, the numbers from the question and plugging them in, solving for the last variable that you need.